Hi guys, my name is Jacqueline, and welcome to my YouTube channel, or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Sorry guys, had to readjust really quickly, but we'll get on with this video. So today, I want to talk to you guys about kind of a serious topic. It is a story time, and I figured, you know, if my story time helped anybody last time, maybe it'll help you this time. And it is going to talk about somebody taking advantage of me and my feelings and me being in a vulnerable place. And if that is triggering to you in any way, shape, or form, please click out of the video now. Um, if you are a family member, there is like the first part of it that, of this that will get x-rated. So please click out because I'm pretty sure it would make me uncomfortable knowing that you watched it or it would make you uncomfortable that you watched it. But I mean, I, I guess it's not really that x-rated, but honestly, like, I would just click out. <laughs> um, but I wanted to make this video as a, a, obviously a learning experience, nothing more than that. I just, I think any time that I experience something that could benefit somebody else hearing and maybe is going through this certain kind of thing, then maybe I can help that person because, I mean, that's all I'm here for is hopefully to inspire and help. And, you know, hopefully that does kind of help. You understand why I do these videos. Sorry, I realized that was off. Um, but anyways. So basically, this took place after me and my ex-boyfriend broke up. And this was about maybe five, four years ago. Um, and it involved definitely some um, people from high school who I haven't talked to in forever now. And... This person I probably will never want to speak to just because it, it's a very bad time. Um, so basically, this guy from my high school messaged me. We were talking. At the time, I kind of was seeing somebody else, but like we weren't exclusive. We weren't together because I didn't want to be in another relationship. But that doesn't really have anything to do with the story. I just want you to, to understand that at the time, I didn't want a boyfriend, but at the same time... I was still curious because like who isn't and I was confused and I was definitely not in a good headspace when this all took place so keep that in mind um I just remember this guy messaged me and I've always had like kind of a crush on him or not even really a crush but I always found him attractive so it was like oh my god he's messaging me like that's so weird so, like, we were talking back and forth, and I believe we were talking for, like, a good solid month, like, every day. And he asked me if he, if I wanted to spend the night with him. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Like, that sounds fun. And I was 21 at the time, so, you know, I'm, I'm, like, old enough to be able to make my own decisions of if I want to spend time with a boy overnight or not. And so... Um, he tells me he's gonna rent out a hotel room, um, is there anything I want to do? And I was like, well, I wouldn't mind having a few drinks, like, hopefully for me, because I am kind of not shy. Well, I guess, yeah, I am kind of shy when it comes to, like, newer people, because, like, I don't know how to react. And I didn't really talk to him much when we were in school, so he was kind of a bad boy, too, so, like, I didn't know what to do in that situation, because I... I was like kind of all over the place like I some days I would be a bad girl some days I wouldn't you know like it all depends um so we end up um he ends up picking me up with his dad like his dad was the one driving and like I found that strange that he didn't drive but like I can't say anything because I don't drive but I don't know to me I was like oh okay so his dad drove us all the way to the liquor store in the city so we went to the liquor store, picked up, like, you know, whatever we wanted to drink that night. He paid for everything, and I didn't ask him to, so don't any guys watching be like, oh, you, it's probably because you asked. Like, no, I didn't. So he basically, um, we went and got the hotel room, and we went in, and we were just hanging out, talking, catching up, drinking a little bit, and then he just all of a sudden was like, I want to take a shower, and I'm thinking, like, I already showered today, but okay, like, whatever. So he hops in the shower and I just kind of sit there and like watch and like it was weird. I, I realized and it sounds even weirder saying it out loud. But if you're as 
painfully as awkward as I am sometimes, especially in these types of situations where you haven't been in these types of situations a lot, you're bound to be a little awkward. And so basically I just kind of watched and then he invited me in and then I went in the shower and it was weird. Like we were kissing and stuff and then obviously when we got out, things happened. So cut to after and I just remember getting hungry, like really hungry. And so he was just like, uh, or no, I was like, hey, I, I noticed there's a subway around here or something. Like, can we go get like something to eat? And he's like, sure. So we walked to subway and mind you, like this time of year, it was like, it was winter, it was cold. And so we went and got subway and then we went back to the hotel room. And so I was eating my sub, I was happy. I was drinking, eating, you know, having a good time. And I just remember the next morning, I remember for some reason, I don't think the sub settled well or something because I like felt like I was going to throw up like the whole time he was in the bathroom getting ready, like showering and whatever. So I was like thinking in my head, I'm like, oh, please get out, please get out so I can like use it. And like, obviously this is a very embarrassing situation for me because like, obviously you never want somebody that you're interested in to see you do that. So I was just holding on hope that he would hurry up and hurry up. And then he finally did. So like I ran into the bathroom. I tried to close the door. Didn't have enough time. Just ended up throwing up in the toilet. Like where you're supposed to. And he was like trying to like comfort me and stuff. And I'm just like, it was like not even like that bad. It was just literally like a little blah. And then like done. And I had like a killer headache and then I think I was partly hungover, partly the food didn't settle properly. Not to mention, I didn't sleep that night, like, at all. Like, I don't know why. I couldn't fall asleep. It was weird, and I didn't understand why. I still don't really understand why. But anyways, that doesn't matter. All I'm... It's just a really weird situation. And so he had to go across the street, because there was a convenience store across the street, and I told him, could you go get me some Advil or something? And he's like, yeah. So he went and got me Advil, and I took it. I remember we walked to Timmy's after to like after we checked out and everything to meet up with his mom and his mom ended up having to of course when she's like driving me home and I feel like crap the whole day she decides like as she's driving me home like oh we have to stop in at the mall so we're like okay whatever that's fine and of course it's like Christmas time around Christmas time and it's just crazy packed and whatever so we go through the mall with him, his mom she picks up whatever she needs and then she drives me home. So like the whole time that this was going on, we were like talking every single day, like probably at least, I don't know, like the whole day we would be texting back and forth, even though I didn't actually have a phone at the time. I had an iPad, uh, iPod, not iPad, iPod. And yeah, um, I'll do a story time about how my phone got destroyed. <laughs> so you'll understand at that present moment why I didn't have one. And so, yeah, I had to like, you know, text everybody whenever I had Wi-Fi and that was very awkward, but we would like talk all the time and text back and forth and he would just make me feel like really, really good. And like, he would make me feel like I'm so important and like it, like it was, it was just like, he made me feel things that I won't, never felt in a way, especially for three years being with my ex and I never felt happy like this and it felt really good and I remember he would always come over we would hang out for a couple hours he would you know we would go to like McDonald's or whatever and we would like go get food and like sit and talk and like hang out and like he would like be on my bed with me and he'd cuddle me and kiss me and like make me feel like you know I was important I was something you know in his life and I just remember one day Oh, um, I'll do another embarrassing story because I know you guys kind of like when I'm more myself and I don't really care how many story, embarrassing stories I share because honestly, we all have embarrassing moments. So why should we really be embarrassed that they happened? If anything, you could turn it into a funny story. Um, I, <laughs> I remember going to see Anchorman 2 with him and I remember we just got out of the theater and I ended up starting my period just out of the blue no reason just it happened 
Because I remember going to the bathroom and seeing blood and being like, oh. So I had to go out of there and tell him I started my period. We had to go to the drugstore for me to buy my, like, sanitary products, which was so annoying. And you shouldn't be embarrassed if that kind of stuff happens because it happens, you know. You don't need to be embarrassed about it. You're a human being. It's happened to every woman on the planet, I swear. You can be so well planned out and be like, oh, well, I have it for an emergency, but that one time you don't. That's when it happens. Um, so I remember just telling him flat out and he was like, oh, okay. Like he wasn't like offended or like grossed out or anything. He's like, mm, okay. So we went and did that. And then I went back into the bathroom and did what I had to do. And I remember he bought me like stuffed animals when we were there to like lighten the mood, which was really sweet of him. Like he didn't have to do that. And that made me feel really good. It was just the things he would do would make me feel so appreciated and really good and like he would just make me feel like I was the most important woman on the planet and I know that sounds so like overrated and so like overkill but that's how I felt and I just remember him like building me up so much and then I remember this very tragic day for me and it's still kind of like when you have this happen to you, it still kind of gets to you every once in a while because you're like, I can't believe that person took that much time to do this. And he basically was out with his friends, which fine, whatever. And I seen pictures where it was a group of girls and guys. Now, when my boyfriend wants to hang out with girls, I don't mind because I know I can trust him. I know that he's not going to do anything stupid. And if any of those girls crossed a line, he would stop it. And that's what you need to find. And it's hard to find, trust me. But when you're ready, it will come to you. I promise. I mean, maybe not if you're sitting in your room and not doing anything about it. But you just have to be patient and you will find somebody. Trust me. Because I wasn't looking when I found my boyfriend. And you know what? I couldn't be happier with the person I'm with. So it's just a matter of patience and time and I know that's not something everybody wants to hear but it's the truth but anyways enough about that tangent I just remember seeing all of a sudden like pictures of him kissing this girl and I was like like I'm not a jealous person by any means but it's funny because I was gonna message him like literally that day and ask like so what are we like are we like kind of exclusive but not really are we like exclusive like, I never looked at his phone or anything to be like, oh, are you talking to other girls? Like, I didn't care. I just wanted to know flat out what we were. And then I remember seeing all of a sudden he's in a relationship with that girl in the picture. And I'm just like, why? Like, you know, and that made me so heartbroken because it was that moment of like, did I do something? Like, he just all of a sudden made me feel like, I didn't exist. I was invisible and everything that happened between us was nothing. It was just basically a cruel joke. So I messaged him and I asked him, I'm like, hey, um, I thought we were, you know, kind of something. And he's like, oh, well, this is awkward, but I only seen us as friends. And to me, that triggered me because it's like, oh, so you get everything you want out of me. You, you, you literally got pretty much everything you wanted and then you left me for somebody else, which, okay, like fine. We weren't exclusive or anything, but it was, he knew I was in a vulnerable state and he knew I had a lot happen and he could have respectfully backed down a while ago then leave me on because that's literally what he did and still to this day if he ever tries to message me or anything and he has he has he 100 percent has tried to he's added me on snapchat a couple of times he's added me to facebook a couple of times he's messaged me on facebook a couple of times and he's literally tried to get me to talk to him again and i that day i was just done because once somebody makes you feel like you are not anything and once they make you feel like you know you were just a pawn in their like evil game because honestly it literally was just a game and that's what I felt like and 
his actions kind of made it seem like that's what it was. And I'm, I'm trying to make this a, learn, a life lesson by saying you are not worth, like you are not, you have self-worth. You are worth something. And I know you think maybe in your head that you're not worth anything. You are. You just have to find what that means to you. Because it can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. But you need to know what your value is and what you're worth. And it took me years to find out what that really was. But if a man ever, or a woman, ever takes advantage of you, do not think for a second that you were stupid, that you were this, that you were that. No, you were being human. You had human emotions. Just because they went out of their way to treat you like crap doesn't mean you have to feel bad. Because you, yourself, were being true to yourself and you were loving with your whole heart. Yes, it didn't work and that's okay because guess what? It could have been a lot worse. You could have finally got with that person and it could have been like the worst experience of your life. And that's kind of how I, ex I would explain being with my ex. And I know that sounds harsh and mean and cruel, but it is the truth. And I just want you guys to know that you are worth everything. Everything. Trust me. And I don't want you to think that because a person took advantage of me, like, I must have been stupid or no. I was being a human being and trying to treat somebody with decency when they were treating me with decency until they weren't. And what he did was wrong. And I know that it's an easy, like, you know, confusion, I guess, in a way. But it's not because, you know, he could have at any point said we are just friends, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like he could have reached out and said something and he didn't. And to me, I just felt like I was a part of a game. And we got into a huge argument and he basically told me I was too awkward for him. And like, I was too innocent. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not exactly innocent, but I'm not exactly like, you know, I'm awkward, sure, but my boyfriend finds it adorable that I'm awkward and I'm okay with being awkward because you know what? It's a part of me and there's nothing I can do about it other than just living my damn awkward life. And I, I want you guys to know that it is okay if you are the way you are. Somebody will find it adorable and appreciate it, the hell out of it. You just have to be patient. And I just want everybody to know that you please have self-worth. If you have any issues where you just feel like nothing, like you don't feel like you belong, you literally feel like crap about yourself, please go get help if you need to. If you feel like you need somebody to sit down and talk to you and talk with you and make you feel confident and comfortable in your own shoes and, you know, please try to find a way to get yourself some help because it is the best thing you could do for yourself. And if not, have a group therapy session with your friends. Lay down the line, tell them what's going on. And you can get different perspectives and you can be able to support each other. And that's what you need is a good support system to get you through these kind of things. Because I'm not going to lie to you, you're going to meet a lot of women or men that are going to treat you horribly and you don't know why. And you may not know why, but you're gonna, it's gonna happen and it sucks. But we all have to go through it before we can find the right one. There's always a right one. You just have to do a lot to get to it and it sucks. Or sometimes you find it right off the bat and it's, you're one of those people I, you know, I admire that you got to find that right away. But I think what it is too is you have to struggle to find it because you'll appreciate it more. If it just walked into your life and, you know, and you didn't have to do a thing, would you really appreciate it? Because I probably wouldn't. And, you know, I think that you definitely need to take a look at yourself in the mirror every day and think, think about things that you like about yourself and think about things that make you feel good about yourself. Because I think that helps shape your day. If you can't do that, that's okay. But I, I'm just trying to suggest little things that can get you to feel better about yourself. Because for a long time, this did affect me. And it probably, if it happened to you, it probably affected you. Let me know in the comments if you've ever had a situation where somebody led you on way too long. And then 
you all of a sudden found out they're in a relationship and it just treated you horribly and then the person is still reaching out to you to this day. Let me know in the comments what types of videos, videos you want me to do. Let me know in the comments anything like, you know, give me some like, you know, let me know how I'm doing. If you want to start a conversation in the comments, go right ahead. I would love to hear from you guys. And uh, I promise you next week, hopefully I, um, I will definitely post something a little more lighthearted. But I do like doing, like I said, some serious topics because I feel like it can and, and will end up helping somebody. So in case nobody has told you today, you matter. Bye guys.